Good morning, sunshine. So we zoomed on in on me then. What is really going on up here? I should have went ahead and got my Oh, that thing just jumps around. I don't know why every morning it takes me off guard. Y'all, I couldn't go, I couldn't seem to stop with my description there, just on and on. The goodness of God. I am tired this morning. I am tired this morning. I couldn't seem to wind down last night. Um, I think it had something to do with that snake that was in the living room floor when we got home from church. Oh my goodness, it's crazy because I was just telling somebody about the um, evidence of snakes and moss that's been seen around here. But anyways, we're working on it, eliminating the entries and whatnot. Oh, glory be to God. Anyway, so I had my adrenaline pumped, right? And um, I think it kept it pumped till like midnight. <laughs> so I'm exhausted. But anyways, God is good all of the time. And I know that he will supernaturally give me the strength I need to make it through. But I can't do it on my own. He does what I can't do. With this, with man, with man this is impossible. But with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen? So, um... You know, I glory in that fact this morning that he is able, that he's willing. When I'm busy about his business, then he most certainly is going to provide all that I need to carry it out. He's going to, he, he ensures that, I, um, that I'm successful in all the things he has called me to do. And I don't want success in anything else. I don't want anything else. You know, everything else is abort mission. Nobody, we ain't got time for that. We ain't got time for that. So let's be about the business of the Lord and building His kingdom. Why build your own kingdom that would that would never last, that can't last? Um, because only the things of the Lord are eternal. Only those in Him um, will live forever. Now, some are going to die forever, no doubt about it, and burn forever. Um, but, you know, we're eternal beings. Let's build, um, be builders of the kingdom that stands forever. Victorious. I mean, don't you, don't you want to be on the winning team? Anyways, I'm just rambling, kind of like my, uh, description was this morning. So I'm going to hop on into the Word, uh, bring glory and attention and honor. I want to point to Him. I don't want to point to me. No, sir. And you know. He led me to Psalms last night. I think I saw a post or something that had Psalm 64, and it was sounded good. It's like I want, I want more, you know. And I went and started with 64 and read, I don't know, four or five chapters. Um, just walking the floor, praying through Psalms out loud. I highly re recommend. Like, don't let your life go by without pacing and praying some Psalms throughout your home. Amen. It was good stuff. I mean, in 64 talks about kind of the downfall of the wicked, their schemes, and how the Lord is going to handle that. And then it goes on and, um, you know, honors and glorifies Him and magnifies His name and all the good that He does for us who diligently seek Him and remain in Him and so on. It's just, He's just incredible. He is incredible. So, um, September 11th, I want to be mindful of this day of the huge number of families that were impacted on this day in 01, you know, 9-11. Um, I mean, forever, forever, that will be, well, I can't say forever because the old things are passing away and all things are becoming new and we know every tear is going to be wiped away. But for all our time here on earth, for sure, that day is, is stuck, is it not? I mean, how could you forget? How could you forget? Um, so let's be mindful. I mean, everybody knew somebody that knew somebody or, you know, such a tragic day in history. So we want to be mindful of that. Um, anyways, first thing on the page, the date. So watch of the Lord. Don't be so mindful of that, that you're stuck in it and the grief of it and the, and the, the mourning and the downtrodden and, you know, the, the low. Um, look to the victorious king for the redemption of even this day. I mean, he is the, he is the redeemer. He can redeem anything in anybody. So, 
Keep alert and pray that you'll be spared from this time of testing. Your spirit is eager enough, but your humanity is weak. You know, I think that was in the Garden of Gethsemane, Matthew 26. I'm quite sure when the Lord was trying to get his disciples who had walked side by side with him, had ministered with him, had been, you know, and do this power to do what he did in so many ways and, and witnessed the grandest of miracles and still couldn't even stay awake and pray with him the night, um, that night. And they just kept going to sleep. You know, it just, it always amazes me. But then, you know, look at the things, look at the things that we do. If they couldn't, after walking with them physically for three and a half years, most people say, then how could we? How could we not, right? Um, cause, and you know, he calls us to stay up and pray now, often too. Um, so anyway, anyway, he's telling them, you know, be alert. This is a time of testing. May you be spared. Pray that you'll be spared. Your spirit is eager, but your humanity is weak. Your humanity is weak. The flesh is weak. So it takes that time in the spirit, that strengthening and building and edification of the spirit to overcome that weak flesh. To be able to um, to crucify that flesh every day. Lord, thank you for the ancient tool of restoration that you have given us in the watch of the Lord. I partner with you through this powerful strategy of intercession that will unleash fresh power to the earth. What a meaningful model of prayer to follow. As I join with your spirit in intercession, give me the strength and the stamina to stay alert. Thank you for the partnership within your body that this requires as well. No one person can keep watch for days on end. I will take up my post and remain on my watch until it is completed and another gatekeeper comes to take my, our gatekeeper comes to take my place in prayer important you know principle there don't stop when you're not sure if you're a if your replacement has arrived when you're not sure that there's somebody to carry the torch when you put it down you know hold on hold on hold on um spot <laughs> until another gatekeeper comes when i look at the houses of prayer popping up around the world i can see the power and strategy a specified watches. I want to be a part of your kingdom coming in power, and I will find a group of people to do this with by your grace. Thank you for this important key within your kingdom for moving heaven to earth through ceaseless intercession. Let your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So powerful, and you know, as members of his kingdom, as builders of his kingdom, do we not want that? Do we not want that? Okay. It's just so cool to me that we've been studying in the core group about being a watchman. And um and that comes up in our in our prayers. Um from the throne room book. Another um Example of how the Lord, you know, transcends time and space and all the things and puts together. You know, he did all this. He placed all these things strategically from the beginning. Like he, he he's outside of time and he can do that. He is amazing. It is the work of the Lord. It is beautiful to behold, right? Marvelous to behold. So we're beginning Second Thessalonians this morning as we renew our minds with the washing water of the word, the New Testament. And we've been reading out the Passion Translation. Um, just scamming over the, scamming, I always say that, I think I should say scanning. <laughs> scamming over, skimming, that's it. Anyways, over the intro to see if there's anything that jumps out at me to mention. So, major themes in 2 Thessalonians, Persever perseverance of faith through persecution, the promise of God's justice, 
confusion about Christ coming is clarified. The lazy, unruly, and undisciplined. Ouch. Hope we don't fit into that category, you guys. I know I have at some point in my life. Um, for sure. May it never be again. In Jesus' name, may it never be again. There's no time for that. Um, what is it? An idle mind is the devil's playground. Um, idle hands. Idle hands. What's the rest of it? It makes me want to look it up. Um, definitely, they are not doing the work of the Lord. Let's see if the idle hands are the devil's workshop. Okay, it's the idle hands rather than the mind. Idle hands are the devil's playground. It means that someone who is an occupied or bored will find mischief. Someone who has nothing to do will partake in something that will get him into trouble. Absolutely. So, have something to do and, and let it be for the glory of God according to what the Word instructs us. Everything you do, do it as unto the Lord. So anyways, living in the last days is the overall theme of Second Thessalonians. Let's dive into it. God's Times and Seasons, Chapter 1. From Paul, Silas, and Timothy, we send our greetings to you, the Thessalonian congregation of believers, which is in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God's delightful grace and peace rest upon you. We feel a personal responsibility to continually be thanking God for you, our spiritual family, every time that we pray. And we have every reason to do so because your faith is growing marvelously beyond measure. The unselfish love each of you share for one another is increasing and overflowing. We point to you as an example of unwavering faith for all the churches of God. Wow, but no pressure, right? <laughs> no pressure there. Just keep, 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 keeping on, keep doing what you're doing. We boast about how you continue to demonstrate unflinching endurance through all the persecutions and painful trials that you are experiencing. All of this proves that God's judgment is always perfect and is intended to make you worthy of inheriting the kingdom of God, which is why you are going through these troubles. Hello, 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 hello. You know, we were just talking last night at church about great message from Sister Lynn about you know, being encouraged by the discouragement that the world throws our way, the, 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 lack of <laughs> the lack of love that we receive, you know, and the very fact that they will hate us because they hated Jesus. They will hate us because the truth and light that He shines into our lives, that shines through us into their lives, more importantly, you know, it exposes their dark things. It brings to light their wickedness, and they don't like that, and they come against that strongly. They want to hold on to that sin. They love it. You know, it's their way. Um, they're children of darkness. They are followers, whether um, intentionally, you know, whether, uh, what, directly of the enemy. I mean, just period. And that's simply because if you're not following the Lord Jesus, then that's the only other one to follow, and it's not um, necessarily about choosing him, but just not choosing the Lord. So anyways, you know, like father, like son. Amen? So, uh, you know, we were talking about how, and like it says here, you know, on the uh, flip side of that, um, those who are, are striving, those who are demonstrating, to quote this, this uh, Passion Translation, unflinching endurance through all the persecutions and painful trials that you're experiencing. All of this proves that God's judgment is always perfect and is intended to make you worthy of inheriting the kingdom of God. He's molding you. He's shaping you. He's purging out that which has you have no business with, that which does not belong in the life of a child of God, in the home of a child of God. Um, as you cling to Him, as you remain in his presence, as you remain in a heart posture of constant praise, thanksgiving, worship, 
prayer. You know, you're you're seeking him at all times. You're abiding. You're truly seeking first the kingdom and the righteousness of God. Then he is taking care of those things. He's cleansing, um, washing away, removing, plucking out, um, burning away by fire often, tried by fire, like a refined silver, you know, um, those things that don't belong. Because ultimately, though it hurts in the process, we don't want those things. We can't want those things and want the Lord Jesus at the same time. So, so neat that, um, for one thing, Paul is interceding in this intro for this church that he's writing to. Letting them know that he always does intercede for them. Which goes with our prayers from the throne room, right? Being a watchman. But then also... Um, that this incorporates, you know, some from, from what we just learned at church last night, and we're, you know, um, reminded of, reviewed on, I hate to say learn, because I know a lot of us already knew it, but it was so um, encouraging, and it is encouraging to recognize, to remember, you know, you'll get to feeling down um, sometimes if you don't stay in the Word and stay strong in the encouragement of the fact that the world is not supposed to like you. If the world likes you, in fact, if you don't have anybody coming against what you're doing, if you don't catch any backlash, you know, if you don't have any anyone um, ridicule you, as in worldly people, as in sinners, then you're, you know, you're not quite getting it. You know, it's it's a telltale sign that you're on the right path when those that are on the wrong path. Um, don't like the path of your own and don't appreciate your opinion of their path, which is shouldn't be your opinion, but the Word of God. That is our opinion, is the Lord's truth. Um, we know better as, as a child of God in the Word, you know, I'm going to say one that has studied and shown themselves approved and continue, continues to do so. Um, you know better than to rely on your own opinion. You know, that would be leaning on your own understanding, and that gets us in a pile of dung every time, right? That gets us in a heap of trouble every single time. So we have to trust in the Lord and His Word and His truth instead. So anyways, you know, Paul's commending them on doing so, even in the face of adversity, in the face of all these challenges. And he said, this just proves, and I love this, and this is our encouragement today to to trudge on, you know, to trudge on. What is trudge, trudge? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> I have to look that one up. But, you know, to move along. Um, I have a friend that's probably probably just heard that and corrected me. He knows what I meant to say. <laughs> Anyways, you know, trudge along. I think it is trudge. Because um, that's when your feet want to get bogged down. But you got to pull them out and you got to take that next step, right? you got to keep going. Keep going in the name of Jesus. All of this proves that God's judgment is always perfect and is intended to make you worthy of inheriting the kingdom of God, which is why you're going through these troubles. And that's another way that God takes what the enemy meant for evil, because um, a lot of the a lot of the trials and troubles are straight from the enemy. But God uses them even to refine us. You know, He tests us with them. He allows us to face them, to see what we'll do about it. Um, and to give us, you know, He always gives us a way out. He always gives us the tools that we need to overcome. Anyway, I'll get stuck in that one verse all day if I, if I don't watch it. So let's keep going. Encouragement of Christ appearing. It is right and just for God to trouble your troublers and give rest to the trouble, both to you and to us, at the unveiling of the Lord Jesus from heaven with his messengers of power within a flame of fire. He will bring perfect and full justice to those who don't know God. And on those who refuse to embrace the gospel of our Lord Jesus. You know, that time is coming. Um, I pray by grace through faith that they humble themselves and turn to him first. But there will be those, according to the word, who don't. Um, and already have been those who didn't. I'm, I'm certain. So... Again, he's telling us, you know, this is this is just building up to to God, um, how God's going to make it all right. 
this will all be worth it when the Lord Jesus appears and, and rots every wrong. Amen. She want to be on the right, even though it was hard, even though it was almost impossible, even though for your flesh and yourself it was impossible. But by the grace of God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, you overcame, um, you know, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of your testimony. And um, those that endure to the end, y'all, those that endure to the end, it says they will suffer the penalty, those um, who, who chose not to embrace the gospel. They will suffer the penalty of eternal destruction. Jesus. Mm, turn our eyes upon you today, Lord. Let today be the day. And I'm, you know, I plead with him on behalf of those. But listen, God's doing his job perfectly. It's up to us to let that light shine. Um, if their sin's never exposed to them, then they never have a reason. They never have that, which it's not never, because it will, it will come to pass because he's a just God. He's not going to send somebody to hell that never knew that there was another option. Amen? But, um, you know, let it be a light shining from you. Amen? Don't, don't depend on somebody else to, to, to win them all. And so often, those very ones we were talking about that are hate us, that, you know, oh, get that light out of my face. You know, I'm over here in the dark and I like it here. Don't shine that light over here um, trying to wake me up. Let me sleep, you know, like many of us are in the morning when the sun comes cracking through the window or whatever. Um, but, you know, be the one that lets that light shine anyways. They're not going to like it, but, but what it exposes to them can't be denied. It cannot be denied, and the, the favor and the grace of God on your life will not be denied. If it is the real true thing, and you've got a hold of the real Lord, you know, you absolutely are in touch as a branch on the, the true vine, the living vine. You know, if you have indeed um, <laughs> been to the fountain of living water, then it's going to be undeniable. And... Um, whether they take it for the wisdom that it is and turn from those wicked ways, of course, that's on them. That's their choice. Um, but it's worth it, what I'm getting at, trying to find the right words to express it. It's worth that discomfort, right? That inadequacy you might feel, that lack you might feel, that loneliness you might feel, because that might have been the only person at that point in your life that could have maybe been a friend, but to do so, you were going to have to compromise your way. Your, you were going to have to um, compromise your wealth with Christ in order to get close to them, and we can't have that, you know, but it's worth that discomfort and displacement you might feel in the moment or in the season um, for the possibility that that discovery that your light places on their darkness, that sin, that you expose to them through your holy lifestyle that the Bible calls us clearly to that we are no longer sinners no longer bound um, that they'll see that freedom you have in Christ and that grace and that overflowing abundance that he provides that only he can provide and that that will be the turning point for them that will be the um, motivation for them that will be the truth in their web of lies that they they have been wallowing in amen i mean i know i was there i know we were all there there's nobody that wasn't there at some point amen um you know you can't be found if you were never lost and every one of us was born into sin so be willing to be uncomfortable lonely you know uh, made fun of ridiculed uh persecuted um and so on for the glory of God for the glory of God for the building of his kingdom for the saving of the souls that he has assigned to your walk to your purpose to your calling there are souls attached to your calling somewhat somewhere even if it be just one that de is depending on you to walk out and fulfill that thing which God has called you to so whoo that's <laughs> that's good stuff. That's good stuff. It's a high calling that's on each one of us. 
um, to be about the business of the Lord. You know, this salvation comes with more than just a ticket to heaven, y'all. More. There's so much more. And really, really, does that is that ticket available without the more? Get in your word. Get in your word and seek the Lord. And um, you will see that it is a package deal. Amen. So anyways, <laughs> I'm not getting very far this morning. Let me find my place here. They'll suffer the penalty. We read. This will happen on that day when he glorifies his holy ones and they will be marveled at in all those who believed, including you, since in fact you believed our message. This will happen. What? Them who would not accept him, them who would not believe, that would not turn from their wickedness um, and surrender to him. They'll suffer the penalty of eternal destruction, banished from the Lord's presence and from the manifestation of his glorious power. This will happen on that day when he glorifies his holy ones and they will be marveled at in all those who believed, including you, since, in fact, you're a believer as well. Since, in fact, you believed our message. With this in mind, oh, what's that big thing? Did you see that just fly by my face? There should be cracks and holes around here. I'll tell you what. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And probably have been all my life, and I just didn't even notice it as a child. And now I'm like, mm, I need more. Bug spray. I need, oh my gosh, I didn't know what I needed for that little snake and ended up sweeping it out the front. It was a rat snake, so I ended up sweeping it out the front door and chasing it quite a ways from the house. Anyway, um, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. So, with this in mind, we constantly pray that our God will empower you to live worthy of all that he has invited you to experience. Get down, kitty. Get down, kitty. Uh-uh, uh-uh. My leg is not your claw sharpener. Go on somewhere. So, I was going to look at the footnote for all you experienced. That God, that our God would make you worthy or considered worthy of your calling. Which is all he has invited you to experience, your calling. And we pray that by his power, all the pleasures of goodness and all works inspired by faith would fill you completely. Yes, absolutely. The sentence is translated from the Aramaic. The Greek is, by his power, he will fulfill you, your every resolve for goodness and works of faith. By doing this, the name of our Lord Jesus will be glorified in you, and you will be glorified in him by the marvelous grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's see. Okay. Chapter 2. Now, regarding the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together with him, we plead with you, beloved friends, not to be easily confused or disturbed in your minds by any kind of spirit, rumor, or letter allegedly from us, claiming that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. Before that day comes, the rebellion must occur, and the outlaw, the destructive son, will be revealed in his true light. And we know the rebellion is also the great falling away. Let me look at that footnote and see if that's what they say as well. Hmm. I don't see it. Or maybe that's not... Okay, apparently, that's not one of my classes. Apostasy or abandonment, falling away, yes. So the great falling away will come, you know, the son of perdition, the, uh, the antichrist, the lawless one will be revealed in his true light. He is the opposing counterpart who exalts himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped. Um, and who sits enthroned in God's temple and makes himself out to be a God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, we went over all these things? Now you are aware of the ruling power so that he may be fully revealed when his time comes. 
For the mystery of lawlessness is already active. The spirit of the Antichrist is very much active. Was it Paul's day? Look around. Look around. All these things that are opposing the Lord. And so many of them. So many of them. That self-proclaiming Christians are knee deep in. Neck deep in. Chin deep. What do they call it when it's too far? You shouldn't be involved with it at all. If it's unclean. If it's glorifying death. If it is taking lightly the things of God, if it is making a joke out of the cross, if it is, there's so many ways. And they'll say, oh, it's satire. It's anti-Christ. It is anti-Christ. Whether you have a, you know, intelligent, um, whatever uh, term for it or not, educated term for it or not, it is still unholy. And we're to flee from that. We are to flee from that. So often it's something our flesh enjoys. It's something that we like. It's an adrenaline rush. Um, you know, it is, it is, uh, you know, a lot of people, it's a crowd because it's, it draws a popular, you know, it's got a popular following. Um, Halloween is one that's coming up. Let's just go ahead and say it. It's a dark day. It's a, what what about Halloween glorifies God? I know that there's churches that have taken and tried. Why are we trying to conform the gospel to to a pagan holiday, to a to a worldly thing? We're not to be conformed to this world. We're to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So why are we taking and saying, well, let's compromise and let's we'll celebrate it with them, but we won't do it the way they do it. Why? Why? And it's still, you're still participating in a celebration of a day that is dark and disgusting. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you that the Lord is not pleased with people mocking death, bloody, you know, all the things, all the things. Consider the cross, y'all. Consider the cross. Consider all of his dear, you know, precious precious saints that have been martyred in his name. Consider all that. And then think of how we just ridicule it. We take it lightly. We we make fun. Um, we turn we've turned it into a fun um funny, you know, and these are I mean, where in the Bible is fun or funny? This is, you know, carnal stuff, quite simply. So, anyway. Anti way be about the business of the Lord, and if at the very least it's it's idleness that is not building and gaining for His kingdom, um, listen to some ex Satanists that have that have come out of the darkness and into His marvelous light about Halloween. But that's just one of the things, and I've lost my whole place and everything getting on that. It's coming up, and it's been oh, that you can just feel that warfare and can feel it starting to ramp up anyway so the act of yeah the antichrist but the one who prevails will do so until he is separated from our, out of our midst out of the midst then the outlaw will be openly revealed and the lord will overthrow him by the breath of his mouth i love that i absolutely love that y'all he spoke things into existence by the breath of his mouth he will overthrow the Antichrist and bring him to an end by the dazzling manifestation of his presence just showing up on the scene <laughs> just showing up on the scene just breathing the breath of his mouth will destroy him the presence of the outlaw is apparent by the activity of Satan who uses all kinds of counterfeit miracle signs spurious wonders and every form of evil deception in order to deceive those who are perishing because they rejected the love of the truth that would lead them to being saved. That would lead them to being saved. The love of the truth. Listen, not just the one decision, not just let's 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 take the whole word, not just the parts that um, That would, uh, you know, you can nitpick it. You can pick a verse here and there and, and live any kind of way you want and justify it by those verses. But if you take the whole word of God, I'm going to look at Spurious real quick. I don't know. 
I kind of like not being on live on my phone as well because that way I can grab it and use it for stuff. This is the second thing already this morning that I've looked up. Um, spurious. Spew. Okay, it's spurious. That's hard to say. Spurious, I think. That's right. But it's not being what it purports to be, false or fake. Um, yeah. As my Christ. Who, you know, is empowered by Satan. So what's he doing? He's disguising himself as good. He's, he's disguising himself as an angel of light. Just like bringing, you know, supposed world peace. And, you know, it's coming. It's coming. They're going to tell you that they can do it. They can bring world peace. But by means of you laying down your truth and bowing down to their truth that they created. They're already trying to rewrite the Bible and all kinds of stuff, y'all. Wake up, world. Wake up. So, the outlaw will be openly revealed. The Lord will overthrow him by the breath of his mouth. Woo! Jesus. That's what he can do, y'all. That is what he can do. Why doesn't he do it now? That's not his will and his perfect plan. And you don't get to question, you know, I mean, yeah, you can. You can. Waste your breath if you want to. Waste your time if you want to. Trying to argue with God and tell God how to be God. But he has a perfect plan. Um, so there's some things that we don't have to understand. We just have to believe and accept by faith and, and walk it out. Walk it out. So, every form of evil deception in order to deceive those who are perishing because they rejected the love of the truth that would lead them to being saved. The truth would lead them to being saved, y'all. Catch that. Catch that. Catch that. It's it's a whole process. He has chosen you as first fruits in the harvest for salvation. Because of this, God sends them a powerful delusion that leads them to believe what is false. Um strong delusion look around look around how much of the church is buying into the rainbow the the uh counterfeit the anti-christ rainbow agenda how much of the so-called church is all for it love 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 how many how many that's mighty strong delusion right there y'all for one for one um of the anti-christ uh things that's been and you know when people just uh, don't have any reservations anymore about it at all. Just completely just bowed to it. I would say they've been handed over. If they ever were at some point in the right standing and upright before the Lord. But chose to take, to give heed to this false doctrine. To give heed to this anti-Christ agenda. You know? And then continue to consume more and more of it. Until it became this whole stronghold, until it became this whole um, powerful delusion in their lives. God sends them a powerful delusion that leads them to believe what is false. So then, all who found their pleasure in unrighteousness and did not believe the truth will be judged. And it comes simply down to choices. Simply down to choices. When it gets hard, when it means denying your flesh in order to um, hold on to your cross and continue to follow him. You know, when it gets down to that, the hard decisions involved in maintaining that, um, then that's when many put that cross down and take the easy road. And that is delusion, that is deceptive, and it will end in judgment. Period. According to the word of God, which is eternal, which, you know, everything else, everything else, heaven and earth will pass away even, but the word of the Lord will remain forever. Amen. So we always have to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, for you are dearly loved by the Lord. He proved it by choosing you from the beginning for salvation through the Spirit, who set you apart for holiness to, oh, I'm sorry, and through your belief in the truth. To this end, he handpicked you for salvation through the gospel so that you would have the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. He handpicks those who choose him. 
who love him more than all this other junk that we that we keep talking about that we keep warning against and it doesn't look like junk to the carnal eyes y'all it looks like everything that tastes good and feels good and smells good and and on and on it looks like all you ever wanted in your flesh and um you know that's another to make the strong delusion more general the fact that so many think they can have both so many think they can really ride that fence all the way to heaven the devil owns the fence the devil owns the fence y'all thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you lord i just felt a weight come into the room thank you god thank you god this is that hard truth <laughs> that the world hates us for um so when you when you catch that hate when you catch that rejection um that ridicule that whatever whatever whoever sends your way and it may be the closest family y'all know that it's to be counted all joy because they hated the Lord Jesus first and it is a sure sign that you are following his path following his lead thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. If somebody can say they have no enemies in this world, Jesus has enemies. Jesus has enemies. Thank you, God. Now, may the Lord Jesus Christ and our Father God, who love... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I skipped a first. I'm sorry. So then, dear family, stand firm with a masterful grip of the teachings we gave you, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now may the Lord Jesus Christ of our Father God and our Father God, who loved us and is in his wonderful grace, gave us eternal comfort and beautiful hope that cannot fail, encourage your hearts and inspire you with strength to always do and speak what is good and beautiful in his eyes. Another awesome somebody please pray that over me every day I try to and I try to pray it over y'all and others and you know just <sighs> you try to do these blanket prayers but you also need to get specific with the Lord I need somebody specifically to pray this over me every day may Lord the Lord Jesus Christ and our Father God who loved us and his wonderful grace gave us eternal comfort and beautiful hope that cannot fail y'all get a grip on this and yeah it's easy to walk in the world and forget this by the end of the day I'll probably be frustrated with someone or whatever whatever what do I do what do I what should I do let me not say what I do because I don't I fail the test sometimes I'm human of course I fail the test sometimes but the, the knowing just the knowing and the conviction of it and the opportunity through the grace to get it right he's working he's working but you know, run to him, run back to him with that, um, with that frustration, with that snare. Um, instead of jumping into some sin and being easily beset and thrown off your track, run to the Lord, take it to him, apply this word, get back in this word. Um, be intentional about consuming the things of God so that that is also what will flow out. Just like we talked about the other day about being filled with the living water so that that's what our cup will overflow with with that fresh oil from heaven um so that that's what will overflow onto others be careful that it's not bitterness and anger and resentment and doubt and fear and all those yucky things from the enemy all that destruction all those fiery darts that he sends our way keep your shield of faith held up and the way we do that to quench those fiery darts is through the Word of God. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. Amen. So it's all, you know, it's a package deal. It's a cycle that we have to purposefully continue and, and walk in day by day. It is effort, y'all. <laughs> News flash. The kingdom of God. The, the holy lifestyle we are called to by the Lord takes our effort. He will not force us. 
we so often want to say, well, if God wanted me to this or God, you know what? He wrote you a whole book. That's He wrote you a whole book. But he wants you to want to, and he also empowers you to do so. Uh, what did we read a couple days ago? That when we abide in him, when we're doing the things we should, when we're running to him wholeheartedly, we'll begin to take on his mind. We'll begin to love the things he loves and hate the things that he hates. It comes naturally through fellowship with him. You begin to look like and act like those you spend the most time with. Please, for the for all for the love of all that is good. Let me spit it out. Let that be Jesus that you're spending the most time with. Oh my goodness, let it be him that you begin to look like and sound like. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. I knew you woke up this morning. Thank you, Jesus. This is good stuff, y'all. There goes Lenny's alarm. Oh, wow. He's got it set for 6 now. It used to be 615. Well, there's only one more chapter here, chapter 3 of 2 Thessalonians. Let me run, turn, hit his button to turn that off so I don't have that distraction beeping. And I'm going to come back and read chapter 3. going to wake up, excuse me, anybody in that room. He's back there on the top bunk. Anyways, I got a thought. Wow. Thought I good that did. He could have been right next to it and still not woke up though. Mm. Okay, so one more again, y'all. This last uh, verse, or two verses here of chapter 2. A prayer we need to pray over each other without ceasing. May the Lord Jesus Christ and our Father God who loved us and in his wonderful grace gave us eternal comfort and beautiful hope that cannot fail. Encourage your hearts. May he be the one who encourages your hearts and inspires you with strength to always do and speak what is good and beautiful in his eyes. In his eyes. Not the carnal beauty, not the outward appearance, not the stuff that's going to burn, not the stuff that doesn't matter. But may you speak and do that which is good and beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. That is holy and pure and righteous and true. Oh, help us, Jesus. And Him dwelling in you richly achieves this. That part is kind of automatic, but what you got to do is you got to run to that presence. you got to you got to keep seeking. You know, you got to pray without ceasing. You've got to abide in Him. That's where the effort comes in, is intentionally in abiding in the Lord. But in doing so, He's also abiding with you and empowering you to do all these things that He's called you to do. Um, it's a reciprocation like no other. Like no other. A supernatural reciprocation with our Creator. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness, it gets me fired up this morning, y'all. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Worship and adore you, Lord God. Most high, come and walk with us today. Show us every step to take, Lord God. We make plans, but you order our steps, Lord. I'm so glad you do. So, okay, chapter 3. I said I was going to get through it and get and hop off here. Get this kid up and let's get this week rolling. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, Pray for us that the Lord's message will continue to spread rapidly and its glory be recognized everywhere, just as it was with you. And pray that God will rescue us from wicked and evil people. For not everyone believes the message. I mean, don't we know it? Even those that say they believe, they want that fire insurance. They want that ticket out of hell. But they don't want to believe and apply this entire word. They don't want to eat the scroll. Come on, somebody. They don't want to be refined in the fire. And it's a package deal. We need the truth. We need the truth. You can come to All Time Gospel and get the truth. I can tell you that. Our little church, you're going to get the Bible truth. I can't say that for a lot of places. You can go to Gospel Jubilee at the road and get the truth. Hallelujah. Um, but be mindful that you're not just hearing, that's okay, you know, um, grace, 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 
because we don't want to be abusers of grace. We don't want to be abusers of grace. But what we do want to do is be inspired with strength to always do and speak what is good and beautiful in His eyes. Amen. So, not everybody believes the message for those who are not aware. But the Lord Yahweh is always faithful to place you on a firm foundation and guard you from the evil one. We have complete confidence in the Lord concerning you, and we are sure that you are doing and will continue to do what we have told you. Now may the Lord move your hearts into a greater understanding of God's pure love for you and into Christ's steadfast endurance. He's molding you into the image of Christ. For such a time as this, y'all, we have got, this is getting more necessary by the minute. Like, that great falling away, that's not lost people, y'all. That's church, that's the church throwing up their hands and saying, no, I'd rather serve me. No, I'd rather follow the flesh. No, I like the easy way of the world. I'm going to hop over here on this broad path because y'all make it too hard over there. The Lord, if God, if God so loved the world this and if God was so good that, you know, those are, that's the great falling away right there. They've chosen to worship themselves and the things of the world, even creation, instead of the creator. So, be careful, y'all. Be careful, be careful. The Lord Yahweh is always faithful to place you on a firm foundation and guard you from the evil one. We have complete confidence. See, I read all that. I'm sorry. The Lord is shaping you by these things. And you know, if you're not in the Word and in Him and applying these, these uh, well, the Word itself, but these principles, I guess is what I was getting at, His statutes, you know, obeying his commands, growing in him, if that growth is not happening, then you're not going to get grown. You're not going to reach that maturity, which the Bible calls perfection of Christ, which is the goal, which is the end of this race that we're running, y'all. If you don't reach the end of the race, how are you going to get where you're trying to go? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Apply the word of the Lord. You have to, you have to study it, read it, know it. You know, um, consume it, right? Let it be written on your heart. Get it in you, in order to apply it. So, like, there's steps. You know, there's phases, there's stages, there's seasons to this thing, and it's not too late. But one day soon, it will be. Oh, get on board with the Lord, y'all. A warning about laziness and disunity. All right, toes, get ready. Beloved brothers and sisters, we instruct you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to stay away from believers who are unruly and who stray from all that we have taught you. Ooh, ooh, did that just eliminate three-fourths of your friends list? Did that just, you know, I mean, let's be honest, let's be real. And Back to they will hate you that goes back to the separation of the weak from the tears that goes back to many will say Lord Lord did we not cast out devils in your name and he'll say depart I never knew you yes my name is powerful enough to run the devil off even coming from the mouth of one who does not belong to me but no you don't get to enter in because you never allowed me in you never let me know you you never became mine. You never laid it down so that I could pick it up. You never surrendered so that I could have control. You never made me Lord. You never made me Lord. You wanted me to be Savior, but you never made me Lord. Depart. That's the word of God, y'all. We don't like it. We Oh, she, uh, but Jesus loves, it. yes, he does. And he loves everybody that, that went to hell already, too. Do you, they didn't love him back. They didn't love him back. They never let him know them. Get in the word, y'all. Get in the word. The burden is heavy um, for the lost, yes, but for the for those that, that are lost and don't know it, it's heavy. The Father's heart breaks. Verse 
for those that don't take it serious, for those who have no desire to get it right, who have no desire to please Him, no desire to honor Him, no desire to serve Him, surrender to Him, obey Him, but yet want to holler they love Him. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So in other words, if you don't keep His commandments and you say you love Him, He, sa he says, you're a liar. Amen? That's what He says. So, um, bam, there it is. There it is. Brothers and sisters, we instruct you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to stay away from unbelievers who are unruly and who stray from all that we have taught you. For you know very well that you should order your lives after our example, because we were not undisciplined when we were with you. We didn't sponge off of you, but we worked hard day and night to provide our own food and lodging and not be a burden to any of you. It wasn't because we don't have the right to be supported. He's like, make no mistake about it. Those who preach the gospel have the right to be supported financially and deserve their wages. 1 Corinthians 9, 6 through 18. However, it seems that Paul's custom was to earn his own way when he went into a city for the first time to show the truth of the gospel without mixed motives. He wanted it to be clear to them that this wasn't a job for him, that this wasn't a livelihood for him, but that this was the very life and death of the cross, that this was death to life in the name of Jesus. You know, he wanted to be clear that he wasn't after what they had, um, that it wasn't, he wasn't selling anything. Amen? Um, of course, but they have the right to be supported. But we wanted to provide you an example to follow. For when we were with you, we instructed you with these words. Anyone who does not want to work for a living should go hungry. Now, we hear rumors that some of you are being lazy and neglecting to work, that these people are not busy, but busy bodies. So with the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, we order them to go back to work in an orderly fashion and exhort them to earn their own living. Let me go down here. Eat their own bread, not showing up for the war. What? Oh, lazy, as in not showing up for the war, not carrying their weight in the church, in the family of God. And see, that's not always about going to a nine to five and, and drawing a paycheck either. Let's be clear on that as well. But doing work unto the Lord, building the kingdom. Um, so, neglecting to work their busy lives. So with the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, we order them to go back to work with an, in an orderly fashion and exhort them to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, don't ever grow weary in doing what is right. Take special note of anyone who won't obey what we have written and stay away from them. Take special note of anyone who won't obey these teachings and stay away from them so that they would be ashamed and get turned around. Not so that they would be ostracized forever and shunned, but so they would be ashamed and get turned around. So this would be those who know the right way. This would be those um, who have not been given over to a reprobate mind, um, but are just, you know, just lagging along doing the bare minimum, just, uh, just naming it and claiming it, right? And not, uh, practicing the preaching, not applying it, not being doers, but hearers only. So take special note of those that won't obey what we have written which was about holy living, right? Which was about being chosen for wholeness, being set apart. Um, I lost my place again. Yet don't regard them as enemies, but caution them as fellow believers. See, if I would ever just shut up and read the next verse, well, before I go to explain, um, he says it right there, what I was trying to babble around and get to. Don't regard them as enemies, those that you've turned away from. Um, take special note of anyone who does who won't obey what well, we've written. Stay away from them so that they would be ashamed and get turned around. Don't be an enabler. Don't um, don't applaud that which is not honorable. Don't <laughs> condone obvious sin. And don't by by all means reward it. You know. Um, yet don't regard them as enemies. Caution them as fellow believers. 
Now may the Lord himself, the Lord of peace, pour into you his peace in every circumstance and in every possible way. The Lord's tangible presence be with you all. Amen. Paul is longing for the guidance, influence, and power that comes from God's presence to be real to them. And I am too. That's exactly, you know, it sounds like so much striving and so much work, but it doesn't feel like it in Jesus. Because you truly do start to have the heart he has for things according to the word of God, according to his spirit dwelling within you, um, that your desires actually change. It actually becomes that which you want to do and which you choose to seek and so on. And the things that aren't, you recognize them for what they are. So even when it's hard, um, you still have that joy in the Lord of knowing you're doing the right thing by denying your flesh that thing that it's hard to deny your flesh of. Amen? So um, that, you know, being aware, just the, like he said, the presence, the uh, power and influence and guidance that comes from his presence must be real to you in order for these things to be accomplished. Because like Jesus said, with man, it's impossible. But with God, nothing shall be impossible. So, then he says, in my own handwriting, I add these words, loving greetings to each of you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, Paul. The above is my signature and the token of authenticity in every letter I write. So we know Paul can see good and would usually have somebody else pen his letters and then he'd sign them at the end. That's all that was about. We'll be in 1 Timothy. Timothy. Timothy's going to get on our business too, y'all. Timothy's going to be all over our toes too. I love it. That's how we renew our mind. You know? This word is alive and powerful and absolutely necessary for this walk that we're trying to walk out. Oh, dear Lord, I'm still tired, but i got to get moving. Y'all be blessed and encouraged in the Lord today. Don't it all joy when they hate you on account of the gospel, on account of trying to be Christ-like, on account.